Jagadguru Ramanandacharya Swami Rambhadracharya born Giridhar Mishra on the 14th of January 1950 is a Hindu religious leader, educator, Sanskrit scholar, polyglot, poet, author, textual commentator, philosopher, composer, singer, playwright and Katha artist based in Chitrakoot, India. He is one of four incumbent Jagadguru Ramanandacharya, and has held this title since 1988. Rambhadracharya is the founder and head of Tulsi Peeth, a religious and social service institution in Chitrakoot named after St. Tulsidas. He is the founder and lifelong chancellor of the Jagadguru Rambhadracharya Handicapped University in Chitrakoot, which offers graduate and postgraduate courses exclusively to four types of disabled students. Rambhadracharya has been blind since the age of two months, had no formal education till the age of 17 years, and has never used Braille or any other aid to learn or compose. Rambhadracharya can speak 22 languages and is a spontaneous poet and writer in Sanskrit, Hindi, Awadhi, Maithili, and several other languages. He has authored more than 100 books and 50 papers, including four epic poems, Hindi commentaries on Tulsidas Ramcharitmanas and Hanuman Chalisa, a Sanskrit commentary in verse on the Ashtadayi, and Sanskrit commentaries on the Prasthanatrayi scriptures. He is acknowledged for his knowledge in diverse fields including Sanskrit grammar, Nyaya and Vedanta. He is regarded as one of the greatest authorities on Tulsidas in India, and is the editor of a critical edition of the Ramcharitmanas. He is a Katha artist for the Ramayana and the Bhagavata. His Katha programs are held regularly in different cities in India and other countries, and are telecast on television channels like Shubh TV, Sanskar TV and Sanatan TV. He is also a leader of the Vishva Hindu Parishad VHP. <laughs> <laughs> Birth and early life Jagadguru Rambhadracharya was born to Pandit Rajdev Mishra and Shachidevi Mishra in a Saryuparin Brahmin family of the Vasishtha Gotra lineage of the sage Vasishtha in Shandihord village in the Janpur district, Uttar Pradesh, India. He was born on Makara Sankranti Day, 14 January 1950. Born to mother Shachidevi and father Pandit Rajdev Mishra, he was named Giridhar by his great aunt, a paternal cousin of his paternal grandfather, Pandit Suryabali Mishra. The great aunt was a devotee of Mirabai, a female saint of the Bhakti era in medieval India, who used the name Giridhar to address the god Krishna in her compositions. <laughs> <laughs> Loss of eyesight Giridhar lost his eyesight at the age of two months. On 24 March 1950, his eyes were infected by trachoma. There were no advanced facilities for treatment in the village, so he was taken to an elderly woman in a nearby village who was known to cure trachoma boils to provide relief. The woman applied a paste of myrobalan to Giridhar's eyes to burst the lumps, but his eyes started bleeding, resulting in the loss of his eyesight. His family took him to the King George Hospital in Lucknow, where his eyes were treated for 21 days, but his sight could not be restored. Various Ayurvedic, homeopathic, allopathic, and other practitioners were approached in Siddhapur, Lucknow, and Bombay, but to no avail. Rambhadracharya has been blind ever since. He cannot read or write, as he does not use braille, he learns by listening and composes by dictating to scribes. <laughs> <laughs> Childhood accident In June 1953, at a juggler's monkey dance show in the village, the children—including Giridhar—suddenly ran away when the monkey began to touch them. Giridhar fell into a small dry well and was trapped for some time, until a teenage girl rescued him. His grandfather told him that his life was saved because he had learned the following line of a verse in the Ramcharitmanas 1.192.4, from the episode of the manifestation of the god Rama. Those who sing this lay attain to the feet of Hari Vishnu and never fall into the well of birth and death. Giridhar's grandfather asked him to recite the verse always, and from then on, Giridhar has followed the practice of reciting it every time he takes water or food. <laughs> First composition Giridhar's initial education came from his paternal grandfather, as his father worked in Bombay. 
In the afternoons, his grandfather would narrate to him various episodes of the Hindu epics Ramayana and Mahabharata, and devotional works like Vishramsagar, Suksagar, Premsagar, and Brajvilas. At the age of three, Giridhar composed his first piece of poetry in Awadi, a dialect of Hindi, and recited it to his grandfather. In this verse, Krishna's foster mother Yashoda is fighting with a gopi milkmaid for hurting Krishna. Topic: <laughs> Mastering Gita and Ramcharitmanas. At the age of five, Giridhar memorized the entire Bhagavad Gita, consisting of around 700 verses with chapter and verse numbers, in 15 days, with the help of his neighbor Pandit Murladhar Mishra. On Janmashtami day in 1955, he recited the entire Bhagavad Gita. He released the first Braille version of the scripture, with the original Sanskrit text and a Hindi commentary, at New Delhi on 30 November 2007, 52 years after memorizing the Gita. When Giridhar was seven, he memorized the entire Ramcharitmanas of Tulsidas, consisting of around 10,900 verses with chapter and verse numbers, in 60 days, assisted by his grandfather. On Rama Navami Day in 1957, he recited the entire epic while fasting. Later, Giridhar went on to memorize the Vedas, the Upanishads, works of Sanskrit grammar, the Bhagavata Purana, all the works of Tulsidas, and many other works in Sanskrit and Indian literature. <laughs> Upanayana and Katha discourses Giridhar's Upanayana sacred thread ceremony was performed on Nirjala Ekadashi the Ekadashi falling in the bright half of the lunar month of Jayishtha of the 24th of June 1961 On this day besides being given the Gayatri mantra he was initiated given diksha into the mantra of Rama by Pandit Ishvardas Maharaj of Ayodhya Having mastered the Bhagavad Gita and Ramcharitmanas at a very young age, Giridhar started visiting the Katha programs held near his village once every three years in the intercalary month of Purushottama. The third time he attended, he presented a Katha on Ramcharitmanas, which was acclaimed by several famous exponents of the Katha art. <laughs> Discrimination by family When Giridhar was 11, he was stopped from joining his family in a wedding procession. His family thought that his presence would be a bad omen for the marriage. This incident left a strong impression on Giridhar, he says at the beginning of his autobiography, I am the same person who was considered to be inauspicious for accompanying a marriage party. I am the same person who currently inaugurates the biggest of marriage parties or welfare ceremonies. What is all this? It is all due to the grace of God which turns a straw into a vajra and a vajra into a straw. Formal education Schooling Although Giridhar did not have any formal schooling till the age of 17 years, he had learned many literary works as a child by listening to them. His family wished him to become a Kathavachik a Katha artist, but Giridhar wanted to pursue his studies. His father explored possibilities for his education in Varanasi and thought of sending him to a special school for blind students. Giridhar's mother refused to send him there, saying that blind children were not treated well at the school. On 7 July 1967 Giridhar joined the Adarsh Gaurishankar Sanskrit College in the nearby Sujanganj village of Janpur to study Sanskrit Vyakarana grammar, Hindi, English, maths, history, and geography. In his autobiography he recalls this day as the day when the golden journey of his life began. With an ability to memorize material by listening to it just once, Giridhar has not used braille or other aids to study. In three months, he had memorized and mastered the entire Laghusadantakomudi of Varadaraha. He was top of his class for four years, and passed the Uttara Madhyama higher secondary examination in Sanskrit with first class and distinction. First Sanskrit composition at the Adarsh Gaurishankar Sanskrit College, Giridhar learnt the eight ganas of Sanskrit prosody while studying Chandaprabha, a work on Sanskrit prosody. The next day, he composed his first Sanskrit verse, in the Bhujangaprayata meter.
Topic: <laughs> Graduation and Masters. In 1971 Giridhar enrolled at the Sampranan Sanskrit University in Varanasi for higher studies in Vyakarana. He topped the final examination for the Shastri Bachelor of Arts degree in 1974, and then enrolled for the Acharya Master of Arts degree at the same institute. While pursuing his master's degree, he visited New Delhi to participate in various national competitions at the All India Sanskrit Conference, where he won five out of the eight gold medals in Vyakarana, Samkhya, Nyaya, Vedanta, and Sanskrit Antakshari. Indira Gandhi, then Prime Minister of India, presented the five gold medals, along with the Chalvijanti Trophy for Uttar Pradesh, to Giridhar. Impressed by his abilities, Gandhi offered to send him at her own expense to the United States for treatment for his eyes, but Giridhar turned down this offer, replying with an extemporaneous Sanskrit verse. In 1976 Giridhar topped the final Acharya examinations in Vyakarana, winning seven gold medals and the Chancellor's Gold Medal. In a rare achievement, although he had only enrolled for a master's degree in Vyakarana, he was declared Acharya of all subjects taught at the university on 30 April 1976. Doctorate and postdoctorate After completing his master's degree, Giridhar enrolled for the doctoral Vidyavaridi PhD degree at the same institute, under Pandit Ramprasad Tripathi. He received a research fellowship from the University Grants Commission UGC, but even so, he faced financial hardship during the next five years. He completed his Vidyavaridi degree in Sanskrit grammar on 14 October 1981. His dissertation was titled Adhyat Maramayanapaninaya Prayoganam Vimarsa, or Deliberation on the Non Paninian Usages in the Adhyatma Ramayana. The thesis was authored in only 13 days in 1981. On completion of his doctorate, the UGC offered him the position of head of the Vyakarana department of the Sampranan Sanskrit University. However, Giridhar did not accept, he decided to devote his life to the service of religion, society, and the disabled. On 9 May 1997, Giridhar now known as Rambhadracharya was awarded the post-doctorate Vachaspati degree by Sampranan Sanskrit University for his 2,000-page Sanskrit dissertation Paninayastadhyaya Pratasutram Sabdabhadhasamiksa, or investigation into verbal knowledge of every sutra of the Ashtadhyay of Panini. The degree was presented to him by K. R. Narayanan, then President of India. In this work, Rambhadracharya explained each aphorism of the grammar of Panini in Sanskrit verses. <laughs> <laughs> Later life Topic: <laughs> 1979–1988 Virakta Dikshane 1976 Giridhar narrated a katha on Ramcharitmanas to Swami Karpatri, who advised him not to marry, to stay a lifelong brahmachari celibate bachelor and to take initiation in a Vaishnava sampradaya a sect worshipping Vishnu, Krishna, or Rama as the supreme god. Giridhar took Vairagi renouncer initiation or Virakta Diksha in the Ramananda Sampradaya on the Kartika full moon day of 19 November 1983 from Sri Ramcharanda's Maharaj Falahari. He now came to be known as Rambhadradas. Six-month fasts following the fifth verse of the Dohavali composed by Tulsidas, Rambhadradas observed a six-month payovrata, a diet of only milk and fruits, at Chitrakut in 1979. In 1983 he observed his second payovrata beside the Svatak Shila in Chitrakut. The payovrata has become a regular part of Rambhadrata's life. In 2002, in his sixth payovrata, he composed the Sanskrit epic Srabhargavaragavyam. He continues to observe payovratas, the latest 2010-2011 being his ninth. Tulsi Peeth in 1987 Rambhadradas established a religious and social service institution called Tulsi Peeth the seat of Tulsi in Chitrakut, where, according to the Ramayana, Rama had spent 12 out of his 14 years of exile. As the founder of the seat, the title of Sri Chitrakatatulasapithadhisvara literally, the lord of the Tulsi Peeth at Chitrakut was bestowed upon him by sadhus and intellectuals. In the Tulsi Peeth, he arranged for a temple devoted to Rama and his consort Sita to be constructed, which is known as Kanch Mandir, glass temple. Topic: 
Post of Jagadguru Ramanandacharya Rambhadradas was chosen as the Jagadguru Ramanandacharya seated at the Tulsi Peeth by the Kashi Vidwat Parishad in Varanasi on 24 June 1988. On 3 February 1989, at the Kumbh Mela in Allahabad, the appointment was unanimously supported by the Mahants of the three Akaras, the four sub Sampradayas, the Khalsas, and Saints of the Ramananda Sampradaya. On 1 August 1995, he was ritually anointed as the Jagadguru Ramanandacharya in Ayodhya by the Digambar Akara. Thereafter, he was known as Jagadguru Ramanandacharya Swami Rambhadracharya. Deposition in the Ayodhya case In July 2003 Rambhadracharya deposed as an expert witness for religious matters in other original suit No. 5 of the Ram Janmabhumi Babri Masjid dispute case in the Allahabad High Court. Some portions of his affidavit and cross-examination are quoted in the final judgment by the High Court. In his affidavit, he cited the ancient Hindu scriptures including the Ramayana, Ramatapaniya Upanishad, Skanda Purana, Yajurveda, Atharvaveda, and others describing Ayodhya as a city holy to Hindus and the birthplace of Rama. He cited verses from two works composed by Tulsidas which, in his opinion, are relevant to the dispute. The first citation consisted of eight verses from a work called Doha Sataka, which described the destruction of a temple and construction of a mosque at the disputed site in 1528 CE by Mughal ruler Babur, who had ordered General Mir Baki to destroy the Rama temple, considered a symbol of worship by infidels. The second citation was a verse from a work called Kavitavali, which mentions a mosque. In his cross-examination, he described in some detail the history of the Ramananda sect, its mathas, rules regarding Mahants, formation and working of Akaras, and Tulsidae's works. Refuting the possibility of the original temple being to the north of the disputed area, as pleaded by the pro-mosque parties, he described the boundaries of the Janmabhumi as mentioned in the Ayodhya Mahatmaya section of Skanda Purana, which tallied with the present location of the disputed area, as noted by Justice Sadir Agarwal. However, he stated that he had no knowledge of whether there was a Ram Shabutra platform of Rama outside the area that was locked from 1950 to 1985 and where the Chadi Pujan stall was, nor whether the idols of Rama, his brother Lakshmana, and Sita were installed at Ram Shabutra outside the Janmabhumi temple. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Multilingualism. Rambhadracharya is a scholar of 14 languages and can speak 22 languages in total, including Sanskrit, Hindi, English, French, Bhojpuri, Maithili, Oriya, Gujarati, Punjabi, Marathi, Magadhi, Awadhi, and Braj. He has composed poems and literary works in many Indian languages, including Sanskrit, Hindi, and Awadhi. He has translated many of his works of poetry and prose into other languages. He delivers Katha programs in various languages, including Hindi, Bhojpuri, and Gujarati. <laughs> <laughs> Institutes for the Disabled On 23 August 1996 Rambhadracharya established the Tulsi School for the Blind in Chitrakoot, Uttar Pradesh. He founded the Jagadguru Rambhadracharya Handicapped University, an institution of higher learning solely for disabled students, on 27 September 2001 in Chitrakoot. This is the first university in the world exclusively for the disabled. The university was created by an ordinance of the Uttar Pradesh government, which was later passed as Uttar Pradesh State Act 32 by the Uttar Pradesh Legislature. The act appointed Swami Rambhadracharya as the lifelong chancellor of the university. The university offers graduate, postgraduate, and doctorate degrees in various subjects, including Sanskrit, Hindi, English, sociology, psychology, music, drawing and painting, fine arts, special education, education, history, culture and archaeology, computer and information sciences, vocational education, law, economics, and prosthetics and orthotics. The university plans to start offering courses in Ayurveda and medical sciences from 2013. Admissions are restricted to the four types of disabled students visually impaired, hearing impaired, mobility impaired, and mentally impaired as defined by the Disability Act 1995 of the Government of India. 
According to the government of Uttar Pradesh, the university is among the chief educational institutes for information technology and electronics in the state. Rambhadracharya also founded an organization called Jagadguru Rambhadracharya Vikling Siva Sangh, headquartered in Satna, Madhya Pradesh. Its goal is to create community awareness and initiate child development programs in rural India. Its primary objective is to supplement the education programs of Jagadguru Rambhadracharya Handicapped University by helping disabled children get a good education. Aid is generally given in the form of facilities which enable easier access to education. Rambhadracharya also runs a hundred-bed hospital in Gujarat. Topic. Critical edition of Ramcharitmanas The Ramcharitmanas was composed by Tulsidas in the late 16th century. It has been extremely popular in northern India over the last 400 years, and is often referred to as the ''Bible of Northern India'' by Western Indologists. Rambhadracharya produced a critical edition of the Ramcharitmanas, which was published as the Tulsi Peeth edition. Apart from the original text, for which Rambhadracharya has relied extensively on older manuscripts, there were differences in spelling, grammar, and prosodic conventions between the Tulsi Peeth edition and contemporary editions of the Ramcharitmanas. In November 2009, Rambhadracharya was accused of tampering with the epic, but the dispute died down after Rambhadracharya expressed his regret for any annoyance or pain caused by the publication. A writ petition was also filed against him but it was dismissed. This edition was published in 2005 by Sri Tulsi Peeth Siva NYAs. Topic: <inaudible> Assassination threats. In November 2007, someone claiming to be an Al Qaeda member sent Rambhadracharya a letter telling him and his disciples either to accept Islam or to be prepared to die. Police Superintendent Kamal Singh Rathor said that this letter had been sent from Haridwar, that Rambhadracharya's security arrangements had been increased and that an intensive investigation of the letter had been carried out. Gita Devi, secretary of JRHU, said that Rambhadracharya had been threatened by Al-Qaeda, as Ram Janmabhumi NYA's president Enritiagopal had been in the past. In November 2014, Rambhadracharya received another assassination threat with a demand of terror tax over JRHU operations. Participation in 84 Kosi Yatra On 25 August 2013, Rambhadracharya arrived at the Chaudhry Sharan Singh Airport in Lucknow along with VHP leader Ashok Singhal. He was going to Ayodhya to take part in the 84 Kosi Yatra, a 12-day religious yatra which was banned by the state government citing law and order reasons. It is alleged that the ban was due to opposition from Muslim organizations or vote bank politics. Rambhadracharya's participation in the yatra was kept secret. Rambhadracharya was put under house arrest at the home of R. C. Mishra, his disciple and friend. On 26 August 2013, a local lawyer Ranjana Agnihotri filed a habeas corpus petition in the Allahabad High Court's Lucknow bench, on which judges Imtiaz Mordaza and D. K. Upadhyaya passed the release order for Rambhadracharya, along with Singhal and Praveen Tagadia. The petitioner's advocate H. S. Jain said that even though Rambhadracharya and other leaders were arrested under the Section 151 of the 1973 Criminal Procedure Code, which permits an arrest to prevent commission of cognizable offences, the custody period cannot exceed 24 hours unless any other section of the code or any other law is applicable. After his release, Rambhadracharya said that the government had creating misconceptions about the Yatra. Two days after the incident, Rambhadracharya was given Y category security cover by the Uttar Pradesh government since he had reported security threats. Hindustan Times reported that this grant could be a possible attempt to build bridges with the Sadhus after the Sunday showdown. Government officials said that a high powered committee will decide on the continuation of the security cover. JRHU Vice Chancellor B. Pandi said that Rambhadracharya met Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Akhilesh Yadav in Lucknow and invited him to be the chief guest in a university function, and Yadav accepted the invitation. However, Yadav did not attend the function due to difficult circumstances, but sent the Energy Minister of State Vijay Mishra and Secondary Education Minister of State Vijay Bahadur Pal. 
Rambhadracharya was disappointed that Yadav could not come for even 15 minutes for disabled children and said that he will have a tone for this. Works Rambhadracharya has authored more than 100 books and 50 papers, including published books and unpublished manuscripts. Various audio and video recordings have also been released. His major literary and musical compositions are listed below. Poetry and plays 1980 Kaka Vidora Kaka Vidora Hindi minor poem 1982 M Sabari Ma Sabari Hindi minor poem 1991 Raghavajataguniana Raghavajataguniana Hindi lyrical poem 1993 Bhakti Jitasuda Bhakti Hindi lyrical poem 1994 Arundhati Arundhati Hindi epic poem 1996 Ajatakandrasekarakaritam Sanskrit minor poem 1996 Aryasadakam Sanskrit hymn of praise 1996 Gunapadazadakam Sanskrit hymn of praise 1996 Kandazadakam Sanskrit hymn of praise 1996 Janakikarpakataksam Sanskrit hymn of praise 1996 Mukandasmaranam Sanskrit hymn of praise 1996 Sriragavabudayam single act Sanskrit play poem 1996 Sriragavandrasatakam Sanskrit hymn of praise 1997 Astadhyaya Pratasutram Sabdabodasamiksanam Sanskrit commentary in verse on the sutras of the Ashtadhyayi 1997 Sriramabhakti Sarvasvam Sanskrit poem of 100 verses 1998 Sri Gangamaham Nastatram Sanskrit hymn of praise 2001 Sariyulahari Sanskrit minor poem 2001 Lagoraguvaram Sanskrit minor poem 2001 Namo Raghavaya Sanskrit hymn of praise 2001 Srinarmadastakam Sanskrit hymn of praise on the river Narmada 2001 Bhaktasarasarvasvam Sanskrit hymn of praise 2001 Slokamauktikam Sanskrit hymn of praise 2001 Sriragavakaranationasatakam Sanskrit hymn of praise 2001 Sriyanakikaranationasatakam Sanskrit hymn of praise 2001 Sriramavalabastotram Sanskrit hymn of praise 2010 Sarvaragaharastakam Sanskrit hymn of praise 2001 Srichitrakutaviharyastakam Sanskrit hymn of praise 2001 Sriyanakikarpakataksashtatram Sanskrit hymn of praise 2002 Srabhargavaragaviyam Sanskrit epic poem. The poet was awarded the 2004 Sahitya Akademi Award for Sanskrit for the epic. 2002 Sriragavabhavadarshanam Sanskrit minor poem. 2003 Kubjapatram Sanskrit letter poem. 2004 Burngadatam Burngadatam Sanskrit minor poem of the Dudakavya messenger poem category 2007 Manmatharazadakam Manmatharazadakam Sanskrit hymn of praise 2008 Karanapadaharastakam Karanapadaharastakam Sanskrit hymn of praise 2008 Sri Zitarama Kelikomudi Sri Hindi Ritakavya procedural era Hindi poem 2009 Sri Zidarama Suprabhatam A Sanskrit Suprabhatam 2010 Astavakra Hindi epic poem 2011 Jitaramayanam Sanskrit lyrical epic poem 2011 Avada Kaya Yorya Awadi lyrical poem 2011 Sri Zidasudaniti Sanskrit minor poem of the Stotraprabandha Kavya category
Topic Prose Topic Sanskrit Commentaries on Prasthanatray Rambhadracharya composed Sanskrit commentaries titled Sriragavakarpabhasyam on the Prasthanatrayi scriptures, the Brahma Sutra, the Bhagavad Gita, and eleven Upanishads. These commentaries were released on 10 April 1998 by Adil Bihari Vajpayee, then Prime Minister of India. Rambhadracharya composed Sriragavakarpabhasyam on Narada Bhakti Sutra in 1991. He thus revived the tradition of writing Sanskrit commentaries on the Prasthanatrayi. He also gave the Ramananda Sampradaya its second commentary on Prasthanatrayi in Sanskrit, the first being the Anandabhajam, composed by Ramananda himself. Rambhadracharya's commentary in Sanskrit on the Prasthanatrayi was the first written in almost 500 years. <laughs> Other prose works 1980 Bharata Mahima Hindi discourse 1981 Adhyat Maramayane Apaninaya Prayoganam Vimarsa Sanskrit Dissertation PhD thesis. 1982 Manasa Mi, Tapasa Prasanga Manasa Mem Tapasa Prasanga Hindi Deliberation 1983 Mahaviri, Mahaviri Hindi Commentary on Hanuman Chalisa 1985 Sugrava ka aga ora vibhisana ki karatuti Hindi discourse 1985 Srijadatatpariya Hindi commentary on the Bhagavad Gita 1988 Sanatanadharma ki Gomada Sanatanadharma ki Vigrahasvarupa Gomada Hindi deliberation 1988 Sri Tulasisahityami, Kursna Katha Sri Tulasisahitya Mem Kursna Katha Hindi Investigative Research 1989 Manasami, Sumitra Manasa Mem Sumitra Hindi Discourse 1990 Sita Nirvasana Na Sita Nirvasana Nahim Hindi Critique 1991 Srinaradabhaktisatresu Sriragavakarpabhasyam Sriragavakarpabhasyam Sanskrit Commentary on the Narada Bhakti Sutra 1992 Prabhu Kari Kirpa P. Vari Dinhai Prabhu Kari Kirpa Pamvari Dinhai Hindi Discourse 1993 Parama Badabhagi Jatayu Hindi Discourse 2001 Sriramastavarayazodar Sriragavakarpabhasyam Sriragavakarpabhasyam Sanskrit Commentary on the Ramastavarajastotra 2001 Shri Siddharama Vivaha Darsana Shri Siddharama Vivaha Darsana Hindi discourse 2004 Tuma Pavaka Ma Ha Karahu Navasa Tuma Pavaka Mam Ha Karahu Navasa Hindi discourse 2005 Bhavarthabodini Bhavarthabodini Hindi commentary on the Ramcharitmanas 2007 Sri Rasapanyukadhyaya Vimarsa Hindi deliberation on Rasapanyukadai 2006 Ahalodara Ahalodara Hindi discourse 2008 Harate Bhe Hanumana Harate Bhe Hanumana Hindi discourse 2009 Satya Ramaprami Sridasaratha Satya Ramaprami Sridasaratha Hindi discourse on the character of Dasharatha 2011 Venugita Venugita Hindi discourse on chapter 21 from book 10 of Srimad Bhagavatam Topic Audio and Video 2001 Bhajana Sariu Bhajana Sariu Audio CD with eight bhajans devotional hymns in Hindi devoted to Rama. Composed, set to music, and sung by Rambhadracharya. Released by Yuki Cassettes, Delhi. 2001 Bhajana Yamana Bhajana Yamana Audio CD with seven bhajans in Hindi devoted to Krishna. Composed, set to music, and sung by Rambhadracharya. Released by Yuki Cassettes, Delhi. 2009 Shri Hanumat Bhakti audio CD with six bhajans in Hindi devoted to Hanuman, and composed by Tulsidas. Set to music and sung by Rambhadracharya. Released by Kuber Music, New Delhi. 2009 Sri Zidaramasuprabhatam Sri Zidaramasuprabhatam audio CD of Sri Zidaramasuprabhatam, a Sanskrit Suprabhata poem. Composed, set to music, and sung in the Vairagi Raga by Rambhadracharya. 
Released by Yuki Cassettes, Delhi. 2009 Sundara Kanda, Sundara Kanda DVD with a musical rendition of and commentary on the Sundar Kand of Ramcharitmanas. Spoken, set to music, and sung by Rambhadracharya. Released by Yuki Cassettes, Delhi. Topic. Literary style Rua Prasad Dwivedi writes in his Sanskrit poem dedicated to Rambhadracharya that he is an encyclopedia of learning whose literature is like numerous Narmada rivers flowing out simultaneously, and in whose literary works Shiva and Parvati delight while performing Tandava and Lasya. Devarshi Kala Nath Shastri writes in his review of Rambhadracharya's works that Rambhadracharya is an accomplished and eloquent poet who is the foremost among scholars and is also well versed in all scriptures, and who even talks in extemporaneously composed poetry with Sanskrit scholars, usually in Upajati meter. Rambhadracharya uses with great effect the Dandaka style with Sanskrit adjectives in his speeches. Shastri recounts a use of a long sentence in the Dandaka style at a speech in Jaipur in July 2003 by Rambhadracharya, in which one sentence with multiple adjectives lasted around seven minutes and was replete with poetic beauty. Shastri writes that among Sanskrit poets, only Sriharsa poet of has been described as having such wonderful command over Sanskrit as Rambhadracharya has. Shastri critiqued the work Srabhargavaragavyam in the January 2003 issue of the Sanskrit monthly Bharati. Shastri writes that the work has poetic excellence, variety of meters and dexterity of language which has not been seen hitherto in Sanskrit epics. Shastri finds the 20th canto of the epic to be an excellent illustration of Sanskrit poetry in Prakrit verses, a style which was pioneered by Shastri's father, Dr. Brajesh Dikshit, Sanskrit scholar from Jubalpur, says that Srabhargavaragavyam combines the styles of three previous Sanskrit epics. It has two leading characters like in Bharavi's Kiratarjuniyam, the poetic excellence and variety of prosodic meters is like in Sriharsa's Nisadiya Karitam, while the length and extent of the work is like the Sisapalavadam of Magga. Shastri also critiqued the work Burngadatam, about which he says that it has many new usages prayogas not seen earlier in Sanskrit poetry. As per Shastri, new dimensions in Sanskrit literature are seen in the play Sriragavabudayam where there are songs in the Jiti style, and Jitaramayanam which is an epic poem in the Jiti style of Gitagavindam by Jayadeva. Dikshit writes that Kubjapatram is a revival of the letter poem Patrakavya genre in Sanskrit after 2000 years, and is the first work in Sanskrit literature whose lead character is disabled. Shastri says that rhyme is a distinguishing feature of Rambhadracharya's Sanskrit poetry. Shastri notes that another feature of Rambhadracharya's works is the devotion to motherland and patriotism, which is most evident in the poetic work Ajatakandrasekarakaritam on the life of Chandrasekara Zad. Shastri says that this strong feeling of love towards motherland is reminiscent of old Sanskrit literature including Prithvi Sukta of Atharva Veda, various Puranas including Bhagavata Purana, and also in the Sanskrit works of Swami Bhagavadacharya, a former Jagadguru Ramanandacharya. Dikshit says that the nationalistic play Sriragavabudayam establishes Rambhadracharya as a successful playwright at a young age. Dikshit praises the aesthetics of the work Sri Zatara Makelikomudi saying that it represents all the six sampradayas of Indian literature Riti, Rasa, Alankara, Dhvani, Vakrakti and Asadiya, and that it is a unique work of Rambhadracharya when it comes to figures of speech. Dikshit says that this work places Rambhadracharya in the league of Ritakavya poets like Raskin, Kshavdas, Gananand and Padmakar, but observes the distinction that while the works of all these poets are primarily in the Sangara rasa, Sri Zataramakelikomudi is a work which has Vatsalya rasa as the primary emotion, which is augmented by Sangara rasa. Dinkar notes that in the poems of Rambhadracharya, the three poetical styles of Pankali secondary figurative sense with short and sweet sounding compounds, Vidarbi with compounds and soft contexts and without many figures of speech and lati with precise contexts and without many figures of speech are dominant. Topic: <inaudible> Recognition, awards and honors. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Recognition. Recognition in India Rambhadracharya is widely popular in Chitrakoot. Adil Bihari Vajpayee considered Rambhadracharya to be an 
immensely learned person well versed in Vedic and Puranic literature besides the grammar, and commended his intelligence and memory. Dr. Murli Manohar Joshi said of Rambhadracharya that the intense knowledge of the most revered is indeed adorable. Nanaji Deshmukh called Rambhadracharya an astonishing gem of the country. Swami Kalyandev considered Rambhadracharya to be an unprecedented intellectual and speaker, and an acharya with great devotion. Somnath Chatterjee called him a celebrated Sanskrit scholar and educationist of great merit and achievement. He is considered one of the greatest scholars on Tulsidas and Ramcharitmanas in India, and is cited as such. Ram Prakash Gupta and Kashari Nath Tripathi have stated that Rambhadracharya has enriched society with his contributions and will continue to do so. Swami Ramdev considers Rambhadracharya to be the most learned person in the world at present. Rambhadracharya was a member of a delegation of saints and dharmacharyas which met the then President APJ. Abdul Kalam and the then Union Home Minister Shivraj Patil in July 2005 to hand over a memorandum urging to strengthen the security arrangements for important religious places in the country. Abharaj Rajendra Mishra said that Rambhadracharya is of a high mind, has a stupendous grip on the Indian literature, and his soul feels the true pleasure in serving oppressed disabled people. Mata Prasad Pandey, the Speaker of Uttar Pradesh Legislative Assembly, said that Rambhadracharya has opened a door of development for the disabled in India, and that he has achieved what eminent industrialists and the government cannot do. Energy Minister of State Independent Charge of Uttar Pradesh Vijay Mishra termed Rambhadracharya as most revered, whereas Uttar Pradesh's Secondary Education Minister of State Vijay Bahadur Pal called him the Chancellor of the Utterly Unique Handicapped University. Rambhadracharya is also a member of the 51 members Ukhil Bharatiya San Uchatakar Samiti Empowered Committee of the All India Saints. In November 2014, Rambhadracharya was one of the nine people nominated by the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi for the Clean India Campaign. In September 2014, Rambhadracharya adopted five villages of Chitrakoot, with an aim to construct toilets in all the households. Rambhadracharya was one of the guests in the inaugural International Yoga Day event in New Delhi. International recognition In 1992 Rambhadracharya led the Indian delegation at the 9th World Conference on Ramayana, held in Indonesia. He has travelled to several countries, including England, Mauritius, Singapore, and the United States to deliver discourses on Hindu religion and peace. He has been profiled in the international who's who of intellectuals. He was also one of the key figures of the Dharma Prachar Yatra at Detroit. Address at Millennium World Peace Summit Rambhadracharya was one of the spiritual and religious gurus from India at the Millennium World Peace Summit, organized by the United Nations in New York City from 28 to 31 August 2000. While addressing the gathering, he gave Sanskrit definitions for the words Bharata the ancient name of India and Hindu, and touched upon the Nirguna and Saguna aspects of God. In his speech on peace, he called for developed and developing nations to come together to strive for the eradication of poverty, the fight against terrorism, and nuclear disarmament. At the end of his speech, he recited the Shanti Mantra. <laughs> <laughs> Awards and honors In 2015, Rambhadracharya was awarded Padma Vibhushan, India's second highest civilian honor. Rambhadracharya has been honored by several leaders and politicians, including APJ Abdul Kalam, Somnath Chatterjee, Shilendra Kumar Singh, and Indira Gandhi. Several state governments, including that of Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, and Himachal Pradesh have conferred honors on him. See also Timeline of Rambhadracharya List of Hindu gurus and saints List of Sahitya Akademi Award winners for Sanskrit Notes <laughs> 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 <laughs>